Hello and a warm welcome to this special edition of Rajya Sabha Television Question Hour show from the Parliament House complex where we bring you important questions asked by the members of the Rajya Sabha and the answers given by the government. So these are the unstart questions asked by the members and the replies given by the government and today we've got important answers given by the government from the ministries of defense, jal shakti, environment and also earth sciences. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Vishal Dhaya. Well, thank you, Kriti. In fact, you mentioned a lot of ministries and we'll bring those questions as well. So let's begin with the first one. And the first question is to the Ministry of Defence. And this one has been asked by member T. Subbirami Reddy, who wants to know from the government uh, whether it has constituted a committee to work out the modalities and methodology for revision of one rank, one pension, that is OROP scheme. The government says that a committee was constituted on 14th of June 2019 under the chairmanship of Controller General of Defence Accounts to work out the modalities and methodology of implementation of next revision of pension under one rank and one pension and the composition of the committee is under CGDA Chairperson, Joint Secretary Member, Additional FA Finance and Defence Member, Representative of Three Services Member, Additional CGDA member, PCDA, Allahabad member and joint CGDA member and convener. Moving on to the next question and this one also pertains to the Ministry of Defence and this question has been asked by member Muhammad Ali Khan and he has asked the government whether it has tested the unmanned scramjet demonstration aircraft recently. Well, that's a very interesting question, Vishal. Well, yes, indeed. Uh, and in fact, uh, we on Rajya Sabha Television did a show on that as well. So let's uh, listen to what the ministry has to say to this question. Uh, the ministry says uh, its answer is an affirmative and it says that on uh, 12th of June 2019, DRDO launched a technology demonstration vehicle to prove a number of critical technologies for futuristic missions. Now, this vehicle is designed indigenously and the requisite data has been collected by the agency that is DRDO. Well, the next question is to the Ministry of Jal Shakti and this one comes in from member Ashok Bajpay who wants to know from the government whether the targets of most of the states under Swachh Bharat Mission, that is SBM, have been achieved during the last three years. Swachh Bharat Mission was launched by the government on 2nd of October 2014 to achieve 100% open defecation-free India by 2nd of October 2019 by providing access to toilet to all rural households in the country. And Swaj Bharat Grameen is a demand-driven scheme, hence no fixed state or union territory-wise, year-wise targets are set under the program. So far, 30 states and union territories, namely Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Andhra Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Chandigarh, Chhattisgarh, Dadar Nagar and Haveli, Daman and Diu, Gujarat, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Jharkhand, Karnataka, Kerala, Lakshdeep, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagalan, Puducherry, Punjab, Rajasthan, Sikkim, Tamil Nadu, Tripura, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand have been declared ODF. The remaining states are on track to become ODF by 2nd of October 2019. So Vishal, it is hoped that uh, on 150th Gandhi Jayanti, India would be an ODF country. Well, that uh, seems to be the target of the government here as well, Kriti. And in fact, uh, my colleague Kriti spoke to the member Ashok Bajpayee on uh, his response uh, to the answer given by the government to the question raised by him. Let's listen in. And joining me is the member of Rajya Sabha, Mr. Ashok Bajpayee. Sir, welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. Thank you. You have asked a very important question about Swachh Bharat Achievement, which is the Bharat Sarkar. Ka. किस तरह से आप सरकार का रिप्लाई देखते हैं और कितना जरूरी मुद्दा मानते हैं इसको? देखिए जब से माननीय मोदी की सरकार बनी 2014 में, उन्होंने स्वच्छता मिशन को एक मिशन मान करके पूरे देश में स्वच्छता मिशन के लिए अभियान चलाने का काम किया। सबसे पहले तो उन्होंने प्रयास किया कि जो खुले में सोच के लिए हमारी बहने जाती थी, उसको कैसे मुक्त किया जाए। और देश में करीब 10 करोड़ ODF, मतलब स्वच्छ सोचाले बनाने का काम किया। और आज उनका जो संकल्प है कि पूरा देश ODF हो, तमाम खुले सोच से मुक्त हो। और मैं समझता हूं 30 राज्यों में लगभग अधिकांश राज्य आज ODF declare हो चुके हैं और बहुत जल्दी 2 अक्टूबर तक शायद सारा देश ODF declare हो सकेगा। सर behavioural change के लिए आप कितना important मानते हैं स्वच्छ भारत मिशन को? 
मैं समझता हूं कि देश के लिए बहुत ज़रूरी है और इसको हमको बहुत पहले इसे प्राथमिकता देनी चाहिए थी आज देखें तमाम सारे रोग इस गंदगी के कारण हुआ करते थे लोगों में गंदगी एक ऐसा जीवन का हिस्सा बन गई थी कि लोग स्वच्छ रहना ही नहीं चाहते थे और मैं समझता हूं जब से माननीय मोदी जी ने इस अभियान को चलाया आज सारे लोग इसमें योगदान कर रहे हैं और सारे लोग चाहते हैं कि अगर आप देखें कहीं निकलकर किसी शहर में गांव में गली में आज आपको उसका प्रभाव दिखाई पड़ता है लोग स्वच्छता के प्रति उनकी अभिरुचि बढ़ी है और मैं देश में एक बहुत बड़ा परिवर्तन दिखाई पड़ रहा है और right, Moving on to the next question and this question also pertains to the Ministry of Jal Shakti and this question has been asked by member Harnath Singh Yadav and he has asked whether the government has any plan to make rainwater harvesting system mandatory in all government structures and if so the details thereof Well the Jal Shakti Ministry in its response says that as per the information provided by Ministry of Urban Development and Housing uh, the model building bylaws 2016 have been issued for guidance of uh, state and union territories uh, which is a chapter on rainwater harvesting now the provisions of this chapter are applicable to all the buildings the implementation of the rainwater harvesting policy comes within the purview of the state government urban local body urban development authorities uh, as per model building bylaws 2016 provision of rainwater harvesting is applicable to all residential plots above 100 square meters and 32 states and union territories have adopted the rainwater harvesting provisions well the next question is to the ministry of heavy industries and public enterprises and this one comes from the member binoy vishwam who wants to know about the policies of the government to boost electric vehicles in the country well vishal the government also made several proposals in the union budget as well to promote evs in the country and here the government says that in order to promote manufacturing of electric vehicle and hybrid vehicle technology and to ensure sustainable growth of the same the government notified fame india scheme with effect from 1st of april 2015 for a period of 2 years with a total outlay of 795 crore rupees the phase 1 of the scheme was extended from time to time and the last extension was allowed till 31st of march 2019 with an increase in the total outlay of 895 crore rupees phase 1 of the scheme was implemented through four focus areas namely demand creation technology platform pilot project and charging infrastructure under demand creation focus area of scheme was about 2.78 lakh electric or hybrid vehicles were supported with a total demand incentives of 343 crore rupees and for purchase of evs under the scheme also 465 buses were sanctioned to various cities and states under the scheme in addition to above several projects were approved sanctioned under technology platform pilot project and charging infrastructure focus areas of the scheme while well, moving on to the next question and this one is to the ministry of coal and asked by member sanjay singh and he has asked whether it is a fact that production of coal in financial year 2018-19 has been recorded at 606.89 million ton which is around 3 million ton short of its planned production target of 610 million ton Well, the coal ministry in its answer says that CIL, that is Coal India Limited, uh, produced 606.89 million ton against the target of 610 million ton in financial year 2018-19, which is short by around 3 million ton of the production target. Now, the major reasons for the shortfall uh, in production, as per CIL, are land acquisition. physical possession of land rehabilitation and resettlement issues encroachers forestry clearance environmental clearance evacuation and logistic constraints and law and order problems etc on cil produced 91.88 million tons of coal during the month april to may 2019 compared to 91.98 million tons in the corresponding period of previous year showing a negative growth of 0.1% The Ministry of Coal has fixed the target of coal production of 660 million tons by CIL for 2019-20. To achieve this target, the focus of the government is on pursuing with state governments for assistance in land acquisition and law and order issues and coordinated efforts with railways for the movement of coal. Well, the next question is to the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways, and this is from Member C. M. Ramesh, who wants to know from the government whether there has been an increase in the fatal road accidents on the national highways, and if so. he wants to know the details during the last 2 years well this issue was also raised in the house during zero hour yesterday wherein the government said that it is taking steps to make sure that our roads are safer and also ensuring that our tires are safer by mixing silicon and also nitrogen 
And here the government says that as per the data information from the police department of all states and union territories, the total number of fatal road accidents on all types of roads, including national highways in the country, were 1,36,071 during the year 2016 and during 2017, 1,34,796. And the government has further said that NHAI is implementing ATMS, Advanced Traffic Management System, on EPE, which is Eastern Peripheral Expressway, with installation of CCTV cameras and control systems to monitor speed violations and lane discipline. Well, the next question is also to the Ministry of Highways, and this question has been asked by member Hussein Dalwai, and he has asked the details of the current status of National Register on Transport Portal. Well, the Transport Ministry in its answer says that uh, the centralized national registry for transport maintained by this ministry through National Informatics Center, that is NIC, comprises approximately 25 crore vehicle registration records and approximately 15 crore driving licenses records. Now, the revenue collected by the government by providing access to Wahan and Sarathi database is almost 65 crore rupees till date. And the government has provided access to 32 government entities and 87 private entities. The ministry further says that it has provided for bulk data sharing policy and procedure for sharing certain fields in bulk data of vehicle registration. Now, the organization seeking bulk data can obtain the data with an amount of 3 crore rupees for the financial year 2019-20. The education institutions can obtain the data only for research purposes and for internal use and are provided the bulk data one time on payment of an amount of 5 lakh rupees only for the financial year 2019-20. So Vishal, these were the important questions and answers in today's edition of Question R. Well, yes, indeed. And for more in Hindi, our colleagues Arvind Singh and Preeti Singh will be meeting you after the break. Stay tuned.